be that? You kind of look like oh. the. I could. Anakin. I could. You could be. You could, slice ooh. the youth up, bruh. So, so, oh, Hold on. I, I want to look at what about, all what about of them like with a, lightsabers. Today, we have a very special guest on the Courage and Aid Shot Show. He is a social media giant with over 14 million TikTok followers, nearly 6 million Instagram followers, and he's 100 Thieves' newest creator that joined on May 11th. He also just went on a Europe spree. He's back in Los Angeles. He's got 87 cars from the 1980s. <laughs> he's got a fucking warehouse, and he is cheeks at Apex Legends. <laughs> Awful. Oh. Vinny Hacker, welcome to the show. Thank you. We don't have a crowd, so I'm clapping. Thank you. Yeah. A lot. Vinny. Uh, were, were all those things true, by the way, what I just said? Yeah. I think the last part was probably the most true it's all of right. all of them. We'll get you there. Are you dating Olivia Rodrigo? <laughs> Dude. What? <laughs> it has been like a month. <laughs> How late are you on no. the trends? No, 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 no. I'm not late on the trends. The mm. only reason why I ask is because I went to dinner last week. And we oh, sat God. down, we're eating, and then about 30 minutes into the dinner, there's like a bodyguard that's sitting directly in front of me, standing directly in front of me. Mm. And I went to the bathroom, came back, and I'm like, is this guy part of the restaurant or is he standing over this table? Yeah. And then as a woman comes and sits down at the table he's standing over, he goes and sits at the bar and I notice he's got a little earpiece and I'm like, okay, he's 100% a bodyguard. So I show the phone to Haley, I'm like, do you know who those people are? Because I don't recognize them at all. She's like, oh, yeah, that's Olivia Rodrigo. I was sitting five feet away from her at dinner the other night. And you popped into my head because of the tabloid photos. We don't have to have this in there. No, but I was I just care. curious. Like, what? Because there was a photo of you guys. No, so that was, that was like, we went to a show. She, I've known her for, like, six, eight months now. Because mm. we met at my friend's birthday party. And I was hanging out with, like, a group of, like, her and her friends and me and my friends, like, and apparently Jack had met her before, who's my close buddy. I think he has, but so basically, like, Jack knew, like, that, like, all those people that she was hanging out with, and we were just chilling the whole night, and then we knew, we became friends with her, and then I went to her show that night, and then afterwards, I can't remember what it was called where we went, but there were, like, it was, like, her and a bunch of her friends that went to the show, so. Great. Yeah. That's fun. A man of honesty and humility. I, I I just figured that would probably be the best uh, way to kick this off in the most awkward way. So mm. thank you for humoring me. Of course. Uh, Vinny. Yes. Jack said you're trash at Apex. We'll get to that later. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen you in a couple weeks. We did mm -hmm. your announcement video, and you know I walked out of the room, and the first thing that I said to the people when from the content team, I was like, "Wow, this guy actually can act pretty well. Like you fit right in. Like the comedic the comedic beats." I, I enjoyed the shoot. I'm like, we really made the right decision here. Um, and so I just want you to know, first and mm -hmm. foremost, good to see you finally back in the compound. You. Since then, you've been in Europe. I just saw all these photos, these glam photos. You got, you got people walking by you as you're doing these photo shoots. Mm -hmm. What was the trip like? Why were, you, why were you in Europe? And will they let you back in? So I am actually not allowed back in Europe for 14 counts of arson. Oh, um, no. But. Okay. Same, it, same. But it was fun. I'm kidding, by the way. But so I went to Spain first. I went to Barcelona. Um, and that was for a festival called Primavera. So I went there and uh, we were there for about four days. And then I was supposed to go to Milan right after that. But then some things fell through. I was supposed to go there for a uh, fashion show and whatnot. Things fell through. And I was like, shit, well, I don't, you know, I'm stuck in Barcelona right now. I'm not going to Milan. I was supposed to go to Milan. Mm. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to just go straight to Paris. So I went straight after four days uh, staying in Barcelona. I went straight to Paris, and I was there for like two weeks. Paris is awesome. And, yeah, no, I love Paris. Paris is Paris is awesome. But So I was there for like a week and a half, and I was just chilling before I had like anything to do. Mm. So we were just like walking around for a whole week and a half. Just, Just <laughs> – Literally, like, I'd wake up, and my automatic response would be, throw on clothes, and just start walking. <laughs> That's and what I you do in Europe. Walk. Everybody yeah. walks. That's why yeah. they think America's dumb, because we got a lot of fat. We don't, have, we don't walk anywhere. Most places you can't walk, unless you live in a city. Yeah. And some cities really aren't that walkable. So I'm mm -hmm. glad you got your steps in. Thank you. But you were just hanging out, and you had a bunch of boys out there with you. It seemed like you had a fucking entourage. How do you get that many heads... Just well, mobbing in Paris together. So, I don't know. I just 
flew my friends out because I was like, I don't want to be in Barcelona and Paris by myself. Makes sense. That's sick. Okay. That, you know, like, I would not be able to control myself. I don't know what I would do, mm. but I would have, I would have done something. But you didn't burn any places down. You no. Didn't, no counts of arson. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I even say that? Yeah. yeah, you're okay. yeah. I feel yeah. I feel you got the crazy look in your eyes. So That's if anybody's gonna say it, it should be you. Yeah. yeah. No, I've you're definitely right. murdered before. Honestly. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So yeah. That's healthy to say. Uh, yeah, in game. <laughs> yeah, I went there. I went there for a fashion show and uh, met all these cool people and talked to a bunch of people and then literally had that fashion show, had a photo shoot the next day, and then So are you in with all the like TikTok, I, like I don't know what your crew is because you know you see all these guys. I mean, the early days of TikTok when I was following it, and all these young kids started popping mm -hmm. up. But I saw you hanging out with that guy Noah Beck. I don't really know anything about him. Are you guys close friends? Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good friend of mine. Did you guys meet through TikTok or did you know each other before? Uh, I knew. Well, so we met through TikTok, but we met before either of us were like doing well on TikTok. So. I've kind of known him for like I've known him for a while, like two and a half years maybe. Oh great, okay. So I met him a couple nice times. Really nice guy. He's ni he, yeah, he's a really it's nice. Funny, kid. a lot of those TikTok, a lot, a lot of the, the some of the biggest names on TikTok that I've now got had the chance to meet know a lot of you and I from you from Call of Duty and me from Fortnite. That like when I was at David's house, yeah, I met, I would say ten people from TikTok that I've seen before or know that you're friends with from your photos, and I'm like. What the fuck? These guys know who we are, and, oh, they're, and they're asking if you're there because they all know. Yeah. All right. You don't. You don't know how many people got a like cred? Okay. The, the day because I didn't like really tell anybody mm. that I was joining. I just kind of let the announcement video and like me posting it and all that stuff kind of yeah. do it. Um, you don't know how many like of like my friends that I met through like TikTok and all that stuff hit me up and were like freaking out over it. Oh yeah, no, yeah. it's it, it, it's actually. That was one of the most eye-opening things I've experienced this year. Was like, holy crap! A lot of those guys. I mean, video games are video games, right? Like, yeah, it's the biggest entertainment space in the world. But it was a, uh, it was cool to see just how many of those guys like started playing by playing video games, made even some of their friends they've blown up with now on TikTok through that. Yeah. Um, and should, and it's continued from there. Should we bring any of your friends in? You you want to just start recruiting heads out here? Kingpin, Hundred Thieves, Vinny Hacker. Dude, I could become the kingpin of bringing in. People, you need. I love that. I, you need people. to help me get younger. We need it. We need it. We okay. need to get. We need you. You got some edge to you. We need some more edge. Okay. He turns right. thirty tomorrow. Sorry. Yeah. It's like a thing. I just keep telling people. Well, I've been telling people I'm thirty on stream because I just I like the excuse that I'm old now. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Like when people are trying to get me to go out four years ago, I've been like, "Fuck yeah, where are we going?" Mm -hmm. But now I got a fiance and. I love waking up without a hangover. Mm. I'm up at 6.30 a.m. every day. So my excuse now is I'm old. I'm not coming mm -hmm. out. You, yeah. you want me to come to this place. The pregame starts at 11 p.m. You're out of your fucking mind. I'm going to be asleep by 11.15. So I've been telling people I'm 30. So it's a good excuse. But, yeah, you're 20 years old, found a youth, got all these people around you. I don't know the first thing about all these groups, which I'm trying to – that's why I'm trying to ask and piece it together. Because mm -hmm. I – uh. I really, I really love the show that Barstool does with Dave Portnoy and mm -hmm. Joss Richards. Yeah, is it Richards or Richardson? Richards. 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 Yeah. He seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. Are you guys friends? Yeah. Yeah. I just, I was surprised when they put that show together because I didn't know anything about him, but he's actually very like thoughtful and self-deprecating, self-awareness, got a good sense of humor. I gotta learn. I gotta, I gotta meet more TikTok kids. I'm part of the Young Money Clan on TikTok. I don't know if anyone out there has seen them. Shout out Young Money Clan. Yeah. They're uh they're taking over, man. Jack started that back in 06. Yep. When right. TikTok they, first they, became. Oh, a oh you've seen those comments, dude. There's my, every time I upload on TikTok right now, I've seen faster ones from John in 2004, and then every single comments about that. Um, I actually have a personal question for you too. You guys are both fa more fashion forward than I could ever imagine being. Matt does a great job of always upping his fashion. You obviously are always posting some crazy fit. You got a great fit on today. Thank you. I mean, my Hundred Thieves Foundation's 2.0 shorts are top of the line, but I agree. Um, for someone that isn't that fashion confident, and maybe some people that watching this are wanting to get more mm -hmm. into your guys' level of fashion, I mean, where do I even begin? What? Before you start, I just want to say thank you for giving me that respect. I don't think I deserve it because my playbook's just been get two to three solid pairs of pants and wear Hundred Thieves t-shirts, and that's pretty much all I do. Like I've worn. 
the same pair of 501 Levi jeans every day for like the last but two yeah, months. But those are all right. Those are like your comfy jeans. But like, if, you, if right now, if I go, yo, Nate Shot's gonna throw a fit together. We're going out. Your birthday's this week. I know you're gonna be rocking some fire ass. I don't go combo. and buy. I don't buy clothes. Let, yeah, I. So that, I just want to say that set the precedent because you're giving me too much respect. You should definitely chime in here. <laughs> I mean, I I wasn't always that fashionable, honestly. Like in high school, I mean. I think the biggest reason I wasn't in high school is because we had uniforms, yeah. so I didn't even like know how to like dress in the first place. Yeah. You go to like I a was, Catholic school or something? Yeah, I went to an all boys Catholic school. I went to Catholic school yeah. as well. So we had to wear khakis and a polo shirt. Mm. So did you get confirmed? Mm -hmm. What's your confirmation confirmed. name? What saint did you go after? Uh, it's Anthony. Uh, saint Anthony. Yes. What is he known for? No, I didn't. No, not Saint Anthony. I have no idea why. I can't even remember. Yeah, oh. to be honest with you. Well, mine was I Stephen. Just, I just stoned to death in the streets. We had to do a whole report about why do you remember it. This? I think I was. I don't know. I actually think I might have been Saint. No, nine years of Catholic school. You remember something like that? I was a kid that Whatever. snapped the pencils of the CCD class. Death. Yeah, you're the Sorry. biggest piece of shit. If you were a CCD kid and came into these schools and fucked with all the stuff on my desk, and we've said this on the podcast probably like four or five times now, I just want to reiterate, I hate you, and please, guys, stop messing with kids' desks. All right? You just know these kids with sticky hands, with their shirt untucked, smell like shit, taking your erasers, moving my pens and pencils. CCD kids are the worst. I was about to get fashion tips from Vinny. I know. I I haven't. I I, I'm this. out of practice. I need this. If I'm being a bad podcast host because we haven't recorded many episodes, I'm going to shut up. Let Vinny talk. I they mean, want to hear you speak more than is, they do. Uh, we I, always. So. This is always our. People love this. Vinny, show. tell them how to dress better. I'm stop interrupting. My biggest thing was like, I mean, I've I've had a lot of people help me. Mm. So I mean, like my buddy Wisdom definitely helped me a lot, and he's like, I mean, is that Wisdom from TikTok? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. guy's awesome, bro. He he took me out shopping once, and um, when we were in New York together, and he's he's really good with that stuff. He knows how to like gauge it just by looking at you, I Dude, guess. I, can you connect me to him? Oh Does yeah, he help for a sure. fat guy. You're not fat. Thank you, Jack. You're just you. big boned. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> what is going on here, guys? But I mean, I definitely I started out with like thrifting stuff. Mm. Like I literally, I mean, for a whole year straight, I was wearing like, like. Cargo Dickies and a baggy shirt and a beanie mm. for like a whole year, and then um, definitely like getting into like fashion and stuff like helped a lot. But my biggest thing was like I was I was always like too like scared to like go in places and try them on, yeah, and like just like try on a bunch of different outfits because I always thought I was taking up people's time. Uh, but like going in and trying on stuff definitely helps a lot, and it helps you like kind of like. You just literally, if you go into like a bunch of different stores with like different variations of stuff and like different things that like, because you might not like certain like fashion, yeah, you know, and it does, you don't think it fits you well, then you go to the next place that's different and you try something else on there, yeah, and you just keep going, like, and you can always ask workers for help too. I've, I've also felt like, and I, I've started to go and do that a bit more with trying on, and mm -hmm. I've realized that it's it's definitely helped me with my confidence in, in, in going out of my comfort zone. Yeah. I think for me, it almost feels like a, it's such a daunting task beginning that process of like what stores work for me, what brands fit me well, because I have a pretty broad shoulders, but then, you know, I'm pretty thick up here, but then I'm built like an eighth grader from my legs down. So for me, it's like, Going in and and trying things and then beginning to learn like what brands begin to work for me. Mm -hmm. It's it, the, the the task of going and trying things has become less steep. Yeah, so I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Right now, if I guess I ask this to both you guys, like what are the three brands that you are like resonating with most or like keeping an eye on most or most excited about? Would you say? Honestly, for me, it's not even about brands. Like you can go into Zara and H and M and put together a fit, no problem for fifty bucks. Like I'm not even kidding. Haley will go to the mall and go to Zara and just come home with different shirts, yeah, different pants. You know, you could spend a lot of money on clothes. It's it's like anything. I, I compare it to golf. It's like you can spend a lot of money on golf. It can be expensive, but you can get and continue to play golf for a little amount, a small amounts of money, small yeah. investment. So clothes, I think I agree with Vinny. You just got to go in, try different stuff, see what resonates with you, and find your own style. For me, again, I got 
I used to wear the skinny jeans. I had a bunch of denim from Subi that I really loved. And then that style is out. So now I've got three pairs of pants that are baggy, comfortable fit that I'll just throw in rotation all week. A simple pair of Air Force Ones. You could literally wear them with anything. Mm. And for me, I'm trying to eliminate as many decisions in the morning as possible. I'm like, okay, I got my white Air Force Ones, one of these three pairs of pants, and throw on a T-shirt. Instead of buying medium and larges, I buy extra large now, so it's a little baggier. And then if it's a little cooler out, I'll bring a jacket. It, it really is not rocket science unless you are like fashion forward and every single day you're trying to prove that you have great taste. Three pairs of pants, a comfortable pair of shoes that look good with anything, T-shirts, and a jacket or two. That's that's my formula. Um, I like that. I like but that. I think you give me too much respect. But yeah, I don't really have like a top three. Mm. It's kind of, it's kind of like you know always in rotation. But yeah, I definitely like you know for certain drops. You know, I like certain brands to go to, and like yeah. you know, it it really depends because brands like to change up a lot, like in like what they do for certain drops and stuff like that. So. Obviously, I'm not going to resonate with every single one, um, but I, I kind of change it up a lot. You just so I think what's really cool about your position online and the brand that you've built or the personality that you have, you had you just had a birthday, mm -hmm. right? So happy belated birthday! Thank you. And I saw you open it up Instagram stories with like Dior sending you shit, mm -hmm. YSL, mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton sending you shit. Isn't that wild? That oh, they're yeah. just sending you gifts. Oh yeah, that it's, are probably cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's definitely like I definitely like. It doesn't ever like hit me as soon as I get it, and I'm like, and then like you know, I think about like if I were to have gotten shit like that sent to me like when I was in high school, I would have been like, flipping the fuck out, and like screaming. Mm -hmm. It's wild to me that they that you know I have such, I have so many people that send me stuff like that and i'm like super thankful for all of them like they're it's like insane it's just it really is crazy to think about because at the beginning i said the position you're in because there are tons of people that have like a following like you do mm -hmm. but the way that you've curated the content that you've made they're not going to a youtuber and sending them like dior and all these other brands so i think it's i think it's really cool yeah, yeah. what's the coolest gift you've ever gotten I don't think I've, I I've never really gotten like a insane gift that I thought was like I was like but I mean I guess when I was like 13 I got an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I was flipping the hell out. Yeah, that was me my 64 when I was five. Um That's I, I dope. I've never really gotten anything as a gift that I was like tripping over, mm. if you know what I mean. Mm. I've never been sent something that was like one like they actually wanted to like send it to me per se. Like I've had people give me gifts and they're like, got me a gift cause they wanted to like gauge my reaction to it. Mm. And it's like, cool. But I'm like, you didn't it's not that great want, of a question not to be honest with you. Get me that. It's a tough question to yeah, answer. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just thought it was so get. fascinating that you were opening up shit from Dior and then the next slide was YSL and the next slide is yada, yada, yada. I just thought that was crazy. No, I, I, I it was think, a small thing. I think when, Kind of in tune with that, though, what I love about how you approach your social media and one thing that I'm a big fan of with you is that you don't shy away from sharing your interests and who you are. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I know like what works right from YouTube and I'm always studying that and I'm always trying to figure out, you know, oh, now I'm posting much more reels on Instagram because I'm trying to beat that algorithm there. What I love about you is this like, you know, you, you're tweeting out like how tilted you are at Apex but then, like, the next day I see you sharing, like, your car collection. And then it's like, oh, my tattoos are doing this. Yeah. I, I, that back piece you have is the wildest shit I've ever seen. Yeah. Super when I saw that. that, I was like, that is cold. I don't think I could ever pull off a back piece like that because my back good. is, like, made of jello. But it looks dope. Thank you. And, Thank now, you. and now, like, with the gym and workout stuff, like, you've been really active on that. Like, yeah. how, how important do you think it is f for you to be in the social media world while sharing... Who you really are. I think I think it's really important because a lot of people, like, especially when I wasn't sharing stuff like that, a lot of people were hesitant to approach me mm -hmm. in like they, let's say if they saw me out, they'd be like hesitant to approach me because they'd think I like, you know, they think I'd some like douchebaggy fucking fuckboy TikTok guy. Yeah. You know, and if Guilty. I don't no, just kidding. <laughs> no, he tried you to beat my ass the first time he met me. What'd I do? 
you dude, you, you remember you hit me with a metal bat over the dude, head. That, I, that was Pulled me into an alley. That's the initiation and for every hundred thieves member. It's yeah. kind of weird. You're not supposed to bring it up on camera. I don't know camera. why. You hit Tina with a why is that a bat. thing still? I don't know. Mm. That put me in a coma. Anyways, what was I? What were we talking about? We're talking about being a real. I fucking inter online. interrupted oh, you yeah. again. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Um, God damn. But like people, like people would actually like. So I'd take like pictures with people or whatever, yeah. and then after, like back when before I was even showing anything, like any of my personality at all, it was just those TikToks. People would come up to me, take a picture with me. I'd say, you know, I'd be like, yeah, 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 of course. And then afterwards, they'd be like, yeah, I was like so scared to come up to you because you look really <laughs> scary. And I'm like, I do walk when I walk around. I'm sitting there and I'm like walking around in public. I'm like, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I will say your personality. I, that and that's why at the beginning of the podcast I was like you're a great kid yeah. and I've you know when you signed with Hundred Thieves uh, it was a topic of discussion that would come up with friends that would come over the house people yeah. didn't know a lot about Hundred Thieves and I'm like no this guy's actually got a lot of depth like he's a funny kid he's got a good head on his shoulders he's unbelievable at video games like you got a lot going on in your life but it's like when you watch your TikToks it's like with a trendy beat with uh, your shirt off staring oh, at the yeah. camera looking tough as nails I should try that like. You know, it, you you are probably one of the best examples I could give of don't judge a book by its cover because, yeah. like, if I'm following TikTok and you come up my page, I see you out in public, be like, oh, I want to get a photo with him. But, yeah, this guy looks pretty intimidating or he might be an asshole. But it's the opposite, the complete opposite. Not, I'm, I'm not even trying to gas you up, by the way. These aren't compliments. Don't take it to okay. the head. All right. uh, but, no, I think, it, I think it's... I think it's if you see the guy, go take a photo. Well, I also think too, like one of the things that's been noticed with TikTok is that it's probably one of the tougher platforms to transition your following from there to other places. Yeah. And I think a large part of your success is that you have a great personality and you share your interests. Like yeah. that is something that makes me. There's probably so many people that resonate with the different parts of you, with the aesthetic that you you know have and, and show, and yeah. you know I think video games and Hundred Thieves is you know. Uh, mainly video games, but obviously you joining 100 Thieves, as you mentioned, it turned a lot of heads of people because mm -hmm. you didn't really share too much. The next thing you know, they're like, oh my God, like Vinny's that serious that now he's part of this organization. Yeah. I love that, you know, for example, like like we were talking about doing a land here at the compound with mm -hmm. me, you, Wig, and, and you know, diving more to Apex on a launch. It's uh, threes. We're full. We're, we're, we got a full squad of, uh, <clears throat> you know, so we said special guests. Uh, when we do a road to gold, we'll get you in. <laughs> Give me a month on that game, boy. You're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fucking with you. But um, but I love how it hurts my heart. I love how you're always pushing yourself from a competitive way. In games. Yeah, like you were really high up there in Valorant. I know you haven't played it as much. Mm -hmm. For 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 our hundred thieves gaming fans out there that are watching this, like, what is it about Apex right now that's got your interest? Um, and and. What are you most looking forward to with with that grind? Well, I mean, so for Valorant, I played it for like two. I played it since beta. So how long has it been out? Like two years. It's been out for years. like two years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've been grinding that since beta. Yeah. And you know, I've, I I haven't hit radiant, mm. but every time that I queue up, I mean, I'm in radiant lobbies half the time, and I get in games where it's literally I'm the only immortal, mm. and there's all these radiants, you know. So I've like played at that level played in comp at that level and stuff like that for like about almost a year now I've been immortal uh, no no six months let's say but like I've been playing that for so long I just need a new game that like challenged me and I'm fucking getting shit on an apex every fucking day oh yeah and I'm like like sometimes you know dropping 30 and 5 and carrying Tarek it just you know it gets boring mm, yeah that. yeah I totally five, understand you know? that well, I, Matt I, knows. I think yeah. that's what's important with video games, though. Like to go from being a top dog in Valorant and going over to Apex, where yeah. you know the mechanical skill will be there once you get comfortable with looting, the movement system, all the agents and their different abilities. That's what gets you. That to me, at least, that's what gets me addicted to yeah. games. I know how good I can be. Yeah, I just have to put the time in to get there, and that's when I'm gonna like the the climb is having the most fun. Yeah, it's like my favorite movies and like superheroes is the the origin story, the first movie because you get to see the build up, the mm -hmm. anime arc. That's why I'm kind of buzzing on Apex right yeah. now. I've been I played only two days off stream uh, this last week, but I'm like shit. I'm and enjoying I, this too much. I love the movement in that game too. 
Yeah. I love the movie. No fall damage, mm -hmm. sliding down hills. I just started playing Valkyrie for the first time. She seems overpowered as fuck. She's in every comp. I don't She's, understand. Yeah. She could just fly around. I'm, like, when I'm not playing Valkyrie, I'm like, how can anybody not play Valkyrie? Yeah. You could just glide to any uh, height advantage, grab loot faster than your teammates, fly around, but... Yeah. I mean, for me, I just like playing, like, aggressive legends when I'm when I'm playing. Yeah. Um, but I still do, like, if, if my team doesn't have, like, let's say I'm, like, because I solo queue all the time. Yeah. JHP, half the time that, that door I'm on, Half the time that I'm on, like, some, like, I don't know. I just started playing Apex not too long ago, so I don't know a lot of people in that scene. Yeah. Especially people that are, like, in my rank. Or, because, you know, like, Preds and, like, guys in Masters and Preds and stuff like that. Oh, come on. Bring it in here. Whoa. Whoa, 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 what's this? This is uh, a happy belated birthday present. This guy's getting all this free stuff from all these brands. We got 100 Thieves Gucci bags. Wait, been you're giving them the goods, goods. Yeah, it's been sitting in my office now as like a centerpiece just to have as a, as a you know, uh, memento. Damn. Sheesh. I'm like, why don't we give one to Vinny? It's just a cardboard box. Oh my God, this is such a cool cardboard box. Yeah. It it's is. actually a very nice cardboard box. Yeah. Wait, so that. he's getting the real goods. We're getting a Vinny Hacker unboxing right now. That, oh. oh. Well, put it up on the, the desk. So if No. We... No, he doesn't feel okay. like it. All right. Wow. It's kind of cold, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got a yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hey. Bro, I... A I, bag. And another bag. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. The bag's actually fire. My girl actually stretched it out and put it in a frame so that I can put it up on a wall. It actually looks That's really sick. dope. Ooh. Hey. Look at that, baby. Hey. Ooh, Gucci hunted thick. Gu yes, sir. This is probably the best gift I've gotten wow, this year go. for my birthday for sure. Since his Xbox. Since his <laughs> Xbox. <My> Xbox. <laughs> I don't know, though. The Xbox is pretty Yeah, that was cool. pretty dope. I, I give you that. No, that's definitely probably, I mean, I've gotten a lot of weird things for my birthday this year. Like, because, like, my friends don't know what to get me anymore. Yeah, that's, that's you're tough. You're probably a tough person to buy gifts for. Yeah, I like don't. Well, one, I don't even really want anything. You yeah, because I don't even know what I want. But like, I got like a my my buddy made me like a my buddy from home made mac and cheese, ate half of it, sent me a picture, and said happy birthday. Wow. That's awesome. That's that's a good friend right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's how you know he's your boy. Oh yeah. And he saved you half. I wouldn't and have he saved me half. I would have ate all the mac and cheese and sent you an empty picture. And said, "Hey, bro, thinking about you today. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday!" Here's a plastic bowl. There you go, baby. This thing is sick. Welcome to the backpack club, bro. I'm, I'm in the backpack club. I'm really sorry to any hundred these creators that want one that didn't get one, but I saved an extra for a moment specifically like this, mm. and it just clicked in my head. I'm like, "Wait, I got one of those. Let me give it to him." So, uh, that's a good picture right there, kids. This is a life Don't lesson. Know. All you have to do is be young good looking and successful and people just give you free stuff you're like mm. basically speed running life uh so work on that if you can yeah that's that's important that's, that's, I, that's i couldn't hit a mark on a Tate, lot of those uh, things so Tate, uh, thing right there um yeah fi but the final note on the apex stuff yeah uh, is i wouldn't have played apex to that level that i did if it didn't have a rank system that i cared about yeah and it might not be as polished or as in as great as you know valorant but the fact that there's a battle royale that has a great competitive scene, great competitive mm -hmm. support, and then also has a rank that I care about, and like cool rewards for that rank, it's yeah. just a win-win-win. Oh yeah, like there's a lot of cool things that you like are able to like get that they give you in the game that yep. like when you hit you know I mean for one like you hit Pred, you get that trail and it looks sick as hell and people are afraid of you and they don't oh, yeah. want to land on you. you Dude, know? isn't and that funny? Just like. Oh, oh I'm sure you were saying you're in di like when you're in diamond, you see you're dropping and you're going to place and you're like, yo, yo, let's, you know, let's land here. And then you see Preds come with you. You're like, uh, let's take those three buildings. Yeah. You're <laughs> like, let's go. Let's go into the middle of butt fuck nowhere because I don't want to deal with that right now. Oh, dude, dude, I was playing. I was playing um, like a few days ago and I was soloing in diamond. What are you doing, bro? I'm, dude, I don't know. Like, so you know that like all pred squads and master squads they all know each other and yeah. they all literally set a time they're like get on at eight get off at eight they're like we're gonna grind for 12 hours with our squad that we've been grinding with and dominate. for so long yeah and just dominate right and then there's like so like those people that i know they already have those squads that they play with every day and you know like they already tell them you know yeah we're playing tomorrow yeah we're playing tomorrow so i don't have anybody except for maybe like one or two people that'll play with me i got i got i have Someone that I think would be a great fit for you. 
the legendary Tanner Slays. I got you, bro. I'm going to connect you guys because he's actually always grinding. Matt, too. I'm going to play Apex today if you want to play. I'm down. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, no, yeah? that's great. I'm, no, 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 seriously, I'm happy. What the hell? And Joe will be there. Well, I've been playing with, I've been fucking playing with Joe. Oh that's God. what I've been playing with for the last two days. You're doing community service. Now, nah, so I got two of my buddies, Joe, and then my buddy yeah. Rich, uh, and he's been playing video games his entire life. Worked at MLG. He's an agent at WME. Reps, Cloaksy, Tim the Tab Man, bunch of creators. Yeah, best guy you'll ever meet. And then there's Joe. Uh, Apex, and though. no, so here's the problem. He he plays the game like he's playing like an MMO RPG. He just spends ninety percent of the game looting. He loots the entire game, and I'm like, brother, we got to think about your philosophy because you'll spend the majority of the game just looting to not even get into a fight. So why are you looting this much? You don't need nothing if you're not going to engage with anybody. So when I'm spawning in, just drop immediately. Yeah, go to the most trafficked POI and let's get into some fights. And I'm like going into these, th these engagements with my two teammates, uh, 2,000 two fucking meters behind me. Joe was getting a little aggressive. He was ready to fight, but rich, you know, you're in two V threes. You can't do much. Oh, and we're only in like silver and gold lobbies and yeah. I'll kill one, get somebody like halfway done mm -hmm. on the next, but then I'll be dead. Yeah. Best thing you do when, when starting apex is you just play, a week straight of just pubs and just getting used to the skirmishing, the fighting, the like, the, the the tracking your aim. Best thing that I did because it helped so much when I did the solo to masters. I like spent a whole week doing that to reset. Played seer, always focused, always focused. Uh, like the, the second the third zone would pop, I would scan a beacon. Yeah, go to go to best spot in the next zone, and at that point you're able to really make any play happen. And then you got you got to be willing to leave. If you're gonna solo queue, you have to be willing to. Lead the team and shot call everything. I did yeah. every single game shot calling, and it's made the dude. Like I was so looking, I, I get you know I'm diamond four, and then I get two diamond fours on my team, and I'm literally in tunnel in uh in World's Edge. I'm I'm in tunnel near vault and what and whatnot, and we hear fighting, um, and my two teammates just bolt off, like straight in the tunnel, and I'm like, like they're yeah, fight, they're right? fi they're fighting, yeah, yeah. It's but it's also in tunnel. Which Don't agree like, with in you. Pred lobby, go fight. You yeah. got to fight. Just listen, right? We go in there. My two teammates die off rip. Ugh. Both of them one clipped, right? I'm like, what the fuck? I got to get the fuck out. They're already like, like I went with them as soon as I saw them running. As soon as I saw them running, I went yeah. with them. And then they both just died immediately. And mm. like they finished them and everything. And I was like, fuck, I got to get out of tunnel. And I get, and do you guys know Noko? Yeah. I yeah, mean, of course. Yeah. It was him, Hall, and... And I can't, or Hal, and I can't remember who else it was, but yeah, probably was, fight you didn't want to. I'm gonna be guess in. Zach yeah. Mazer. And I'm like, dude, and those, and then I get out solo, and those three are fucking running me down. I'm playing oh, Valk. Those three are running my ass down, and I'm hopping over the fucking like house and like trying to pop a bat, trying to fucking pop my alt and get the fuck out. And those guys are fucking running my ass down. Good luck. And it sucks that I have, like, it's like, oh yeah. Let's sell it. I could probably get a few RP. You know, I, even if I get top three, top five right now, I gained RP that game though, surprisingly. Wow. But top three, top five, whatever, solo queue, whatever. Top five, top get, five, top five. Do you, if I can get anything, and then that happens, and then, then you run like, to those fuck. guys. Do you, do, you, do you find in life, like, you obviously have so much. You, you, you love playing games. It's a big part of, you know, you're, you're, you spend a lot of time streaming when you're home and doing that. Mm. Do you find um, that? you have to kind of deal with a bit of a tug of war between like the Vinny, Vinny TikTok hacker that is like, you know, fashion forward doing all this stuff. But then also like, cause while you are absolutely an extrovert, I also feel that you, you, you do like love just gaming obviously mm -hmm. and, and being at a, being in your element and yeah. stuff like that. Do you find that there's like a tug of war there that you're having to battle? Yeah, time? I do. I do. Um, I mean like, especially when it comes to, like streams and stuff like that. I mean, I'm obvious. I love gaming, I, but I also like you know going out and you know yeah. meeting people and stuff like that. Um, but dude, there have been so many times where I have been like, people have been like, hey, like like ten different people, ten different people are like, hey, come out, like we're having fun today, blah blah blah. We're going here, we're going here, and I'm like, oh, no, it must be nice. <laughs> yeah, ten different people hitting you up for one singular well, day you know, of activity. Half the time, I don't even know those people. You gotta remember, Vinny's, Vinny's at that level where he's got like those types of people. This is fucked, up. man. It's crazy. You're yeah. 20 years old, brother. Go 
whatever you're feeling that day, do it because you so young. You can do anything and everything. You got I felt like hitting diamond that day though. Well, don't say that you felt like hitting diamond that day because I don't understand how it doesn't drive you absolutely insane the fact that you grinded Valorant, but you still haven't hit Radiant. If I were you, I would be in my room until sun up, sun down every day until I hit Radiant. Just to say that I fucking did it. And that's what I'm this is the problem with the youth. There's no competitive drive. <laughs> like people get people people trip me on my TikTok saying you're getting How too mad. It's just it, it's just a game. How and I'm like, just a fucking dude? game? No, this is life or death. We're getting lapped by Europe and Asia in, in competitive gaming. Like, you know, we go to most countries, every sport besides like soccer, football, we're the best at it. In most cases, not a blank statement across the board. And now nobody has a problem with the fact that we are the, like one of the worst regions in video games. Mm. I'm like, kids, go the fuck home. Don't go to no school dances. Don't go out with your friends. <laughs> go meet them in the lobby, hop into Discord, and start fucking grinding. Because we look like shit out there. North America is a joke. And you're over here. 20 years old saying, oh, I'm pretty good at Valorant, but you never hit Radiant. When you can, I know you can hit Radiant. Just go do it so you can say you did it. <laughs> Where's the competitive drive, man? Dude, I wouldn't you sound like leave my you, goddamn you, room if Call of Duty had ranked play. I was trying to go undefeated on that GB ladder. Go get Radiant. Or go get fucking Apex Predator and Apex. Do something and do it at the best level. Please. Sorry. <laughs> No. You just give up when you're like right at the yeah. Top he's an X Games gold medalist. Damn it, I am. Well, you know, I did. I did do something with the with the pro team two days ago. Mm. You know where they coached me. There you go. They backseat gamed you. Yeah, they backseat gamed me. They didn't did have much to anything? say after after two weeks. No, not even like I hadn't played the game consistently in like a month and a half. Yeah, we played unrated, but I dropped thirty five. Okay, and I was shitting on kids. Dude, that would be the cr yo. You proud of that? No. It would because I could have probably dropped fifty on you. Oh, oh no! God damn, so. bro. Hold on, yeah. hold on. My dude's wearing ball, on, man. Fucking yeah. shit. I, I, I yeah. have had lobbies where I've had more kills than you. Okay. And I've been on keyboard miles for like. Have you went thirty and five against a radiant team though? Mm, 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 mm. I haven't. I haven't. Mm, mm, mm. I haven't. All right. Yo, honestly, have you hit? You're talking about radiant lobbies, but you haven't been radiant yet, dude. I'm like, shut the fuck. Road up. to radiant. All I'm saying is, Vinny Road to all radiant. All I'm saying is, I don't know. What I was gonna say after that. I, I, I'm saying these <laughs> things out of love. I just want to push you to be your best because I know you can hit radiant, but you haven't done it yet. Mm. I'm doing a road to radiant series in September. I haven't announced it yet, but it's this whole thing. So if you ever want to jump in, let me know. You know, if maybe I, I can squeeze you in. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's so spiteful. You know, you know what my biggest problem is is that I've never been able to fix this is tilt queuing. Mm. I don't care. You like, don't gotta fix that. It's the best part. That's what I'm saying. You shouldn't. You, know? you shouldn't start gambling. By the yeah, way, yeah. Don't go play don't blackjack. Go, don't go gamble. If you if you have trouble tilt queuing, I don't queuing, plan on it. Don't because man, if you start tilt gambling, that's how next thing you know Vinny's selling ten dollar photos on the street on the Las Vegas Strip, <laughs> trying to make his money back. That's gonna be me. <laughs> That's going to be me. Rough night of gambling. $10 picture. Of All right. I love how we can talk about anything. And we've been talking about Apex now on video games for 20 minutes. It makes sorry. sense. It's 100 feet. Don't say sorry. I love it. Uh, so we talked about love life at the beginning. Yep. We got to dig deeper. All okay. right, Vinny? Let's dig deeper. 20 years old. Uh-huh. Got your whole life ahead of you. Yeah. Are there any women in your life? Are we, are we dating? Are we looking for anything? Are we just going out, see what happens, let the world come to you? Like, what are your emotional needs right now? And how can we help? Well, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, I'm sure we can offer a lot of help. <laughs> no. Well, I don't know if you guys saw my tweets recently. You walk Gary around the block, he, he brings in some attention from the opposite sex. <laughs> Might have to take oh, you It's just after. old ladies. <laughs> and then Gary barks at her, hey. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Secret, but you know. You know that I'm a, I'm fine with old ladies. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. yep. I'm gonna tell that story to Joe later. He's gonna love that one. Yeah, I'll let you tell it again. years old. Good for you. But man. um, no, I mean, have you? Did Just, you see no. my tweets? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nope. I was I was very rageful about people posting couples mm. on Twitter he yesterday was. for National Girlfriend Day. Just I told the I told people I ripped the their limbs line. off. 
Mm. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> then they, he also yeah. thought about yeah. having a black sense. hole consume everyone and that all yeah. life on Earth would be deceased. Yeah. These were his tweets. Yeah. From Apex and, and and people's girlfriends. But you know, I a lot of the time, you know, I'm thinking to myself and I'm like, and I'm like, ah oh, man, you know, I want I want a girlfriend. I want somebody, you know, that you know can support me and that I can support them at the same time. But then I'm like thinking about it later and I'm like. God, that would suck right now. <laughs> yeah, that would be so bad yeah. right now. Mm. So I'm like, Just give and take. You know, I, I, I mean, I have so many things that I'm doing as of late, like where I'm like, you know, I'm, I went to Europe for a month, you know, and then right after I get back from Europe, you know, I go s literally within a few hours, I go straight to work, and then I have like, you know, a photo shoot the next day, and then the next day I go to Vegas, and then the next day I'm in Miami. So how then, was he supposed to hit radio? What is the most surprising DM that you have ever gotten? Whether it is somebody like, have you ever had a girl that you're like, holy, why is she sliding in my DMs or uh, anybody? Not even like from a relationship, girl, opposite sex standpoint. Like, what is the wildest DM that you think you've ever gotten? Where like, why the fuck is this person talking to me? Well, this wasn't a. She didn't slide into my DMs, but I said into hers. Like when I was like seventeen. Turn up. All right. And then two years later, she like replied with an emoji. And I was like freaking the fuck out. Angela White. No. Damn. Mm. Damn. I think that? no. I sent like a. I sent like a. <laughs> Am I supposed to know? Oh shit. I sent like oh, a picture God. meme or something like that when I was like, like sixteen. Some deep fried fucking. Yeah. <laughs> deep fried. I'm meme. not gonna say who because fine, they might fine. try and kill me. I'll tell you after. Are right. you kidding me? No, no. It's you can't tell the story and then not tell us. <sighs> it's uh. Matt, he's got a, we'll bleep it. We'll a, bleep it. A big career. Ahead. Yeah. Hey, Wex, turn around real quick. Make eye contact, Vinny. It was Jack. What? That was Jack. Listen, I was, you know. This story sucks. I'm taken now, but I said you could be my girlfriend for National Girlfriend Day. Maddie was fine with it. It wasn't actually Jack. I'll tell you later. Okay. Yeah. Have you got, have you ever been a part of like TikTok beef, like drama? Yeah. Like, is there anybody that, that's popular that you like don't like that you have, uh, you're not in good standing with? Like me back in the day with like Aches or Karma or Crim Six, you know, maybe not as. Is prevalent in uh, modern day culture, but there's nobody really that I like. I don't like having bad blood, so I don't really say anything to anybody. Mm. Like, even if I know what they say is like fucking dumb, I let the internet take control of that and be mm. like, you're pretty mature. Well, you know, I also just like, I don't like confronting people because, like, I know that sometimes when I do, I get overly like agitated and I will start fucking just screaming mm. if they're, if they're stupid. If they're like really stupid, like some people, some things that people say online nowadays are really fucking dumb. And like I sit there and I'm like agitated about it, but I don't say anything because then all of a sudden it's going to turn into a whole war and then you'll yeah. be posted on all this shit. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's not worth alert. Now, and then death. Jake Paul's most recent fight just got uh, canceled again. Saw that. Would you box Jake Paul? Ooh. Fuck no. Mm. Oh. Hell no. No? <laughs> I'm good. Would you I box ever good. again? Probably not. It okay. would take a lot for me to get into boxing again. How did that start? And did you see like a noticeable jump in the attention you were getting after? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like, that's when I first heard of you. Well, it started because my roommate Thomas, my buddy Thomas that I live with right now, he... Is that Jet? No. Thomas, I don't know if you've met him. Okay. But he came to me and was like, hey... Some dude asked if you wanted to like box, and then I was like, "Sure." <laughs> Sounds like a casual way to approach but, that. But what happened was they were like, "Yeah, you're gonna fight Tanner Fox," and I was you would like, "Kill that man!" I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and he's like, "Where's the?" I was like, work. "Okay, cool." Yeah. Buddy Tanner Fox is like 130 and pounds then, soaking wet. Yeah, and then he dropped out mm -hmm. of it, and then I was like, "Okay, what the fuck? Now who am I boxing?" And then they were like, "You're boxing Rug." And I was like, okay. And then they were like, you're fighting Deji. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and then uh, that just, you know, I trained for like five months. Yeah, like five months. And I was just like getting my ass beat by my both my trainers. They were really, one of them, one of them is uh, my buddy Liam from, he's from Liverpool and he's really, he's a really cool guy, but he also just beats the shit out of you. <laughs> 
Like when you're when you're hitting gloves and shit, if you put your hands down for like like a centimeter when you're just hitting gloves, they'll just smack the fuck out of you. Wow. Damn. Sounds then, like he did his job then, huh? Oh yeah. And then uh my other trainer, Tyler, he he was like he'd help me a lot with like conditioning and like he'd spar with me and whatnot. And that dude is like the guys that I sparred with were were him and he's a he's like I don't I don't know how old he is because it's a mystery. He has a kid, but he looks like he could be like 28. Like the dude's just like in really good shape. Yeah. Dude looks like he was crafted from God himself. Mm. But I sparred with him. He's the same height as me, but way bigger, right? I sparred with that guy, my buddy Sammy, who's 6'4, like 225 pounds, something like that. Sounds like and a he concussion. just like he you know he he'd work with me and whatnot and he'd like you know let me get hits in when I need to and like all that stuff and help me out but as soon as I get a good hit in as soon as I hit him with one good shot he was just like oh okay and just started beating the fuck out of me oh. so Damn. were you nervous cool. going into the fight with Deji like when you're walking up to the when ring I, when I was walking up no or were you I'd like I'm gonna was, kill this when I was in the locker room I was like kind of like uh you know but as soon as I like got out and I saw all those people. I like, I heard like a lot of loud screaming for like five seconds. As like five seconds after that, just like everything was silent. It was mm. really weird. I got in the ring and then like they were like talking a bunch, like the ref, uh, the ref was talking or whatever, and my coaches were talking, and I did not hear anything. Hey, you I blacked was just out, staring. That's fucking cold. And then you know, fight happened. So blah, blah, blah. If, hold on, real quick. Okay, sorry. Yeah. If you could pick any anime intro song that was like playing in your head or would have been playing in your head if you actually had thoughts in your head, what would it have been? Well, I did use the pain theme as the walkout song. What the fuck? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. From yeah. Naruto? Yeah. <laughs> I used that as my walkout song. <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna I'm bricked up right now. Yeah. I gotta go watch yeah. that. Yeah. It was it Sorry. was pretty sick. That's mad stick. It table. was pretty sick because I was just walking out on <laughs> just straight face and with the pain straight theme. Straight face. I I was six to midnight right Dude. now, brother. Pain? Yeah. That's the coldest shit. You, and then you pulled up that Naruto entrance, one of the best entrances. Of you like know what's anime. funny too is that I used the pain theme for my walkout, and he used Crollo's theme for his walkout. I didn't know that. Yeah, you guys were like the only fight that I didn't see on the card, which yeah. is weird to think about. But I mean, that was the whole thing. Does he? Um, Holy shit! How so much now, money did you make from that fight? None. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to ask. Was oh. I know that there was like a whole financial situation with that. Yeah, that. Uh, don't know what happened, but. You know, if I would have lost, like everything probably would have like went not as good as Where it, it did go. So now let's pretend you never your money's paid. guaranteed. Your like the next fight, if there was one, your money's guaranteed. It's another big ticket. You're telling me you wouldn't consider it, or it would be like there I has to be a figure. There has to be a figure, and like like let's just say Lo Logan Paul's massive, like a huge following. It's going to yeah. generate a lot of hype. There's a big financial thing for it. Would you even consider a fight to that magnitude? Maybe. I mean, I, I'd consider it. Yeah. It's Maybe, a $5 but... million dollar guaranteed purse for you. Mm. Is that even enough to get Is that going straight in before the fight? Or is that it going It is guaranteed. After? I'm telling you, it is guaranteed. Okay, so 100%. <sighs> and don't don't, don't, I, don't put a number on it, because he might get more than $5 million, and I don't want a boxing person to see this. And no, say, well, oh, I was about to say... $5 million is a lot. $5 million is a lot. $5 million is a lot. I don't think... Yeah. But, you know, it... I couldn't say right now. I guess I'd have to actually have somebody See, like no competitive drive. Can't hit radiant. <laughs> Won't take five million. Dude, Yo, Nate we can Chop hop in the ring after yeah, this. I was gonna Matt. say Nate Chop versus Vinny. I'm down. I'll commentate it for oh. free. There we go. You're good. I think Matt's good on that. I have a gun. <laughs> I got I have a loaded weapon. I have You've committed arson. Multiple. You've got I gun. have arson. I know people. Uh. This hey, is uh, actually everybody has a plan until they get shot. If you see a laser on the on your forehead in the next five seconds, Jesus Christ! Vinny, I know. I think a good place you? to end this podcast is. Wait, on... there's no way this is over yet. I got more questions. How long has it been? Forty nine. Oh, it's only been forty nine minutes. We. I but... thought I thought we were like oh, over an hour. Our big clock is is missing. No, 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 no. no. Okay, us. so you wouldn't box again, or you'd have to really deliberate on it. Yeah, I understand that. So the other question I want to ask you is. I think it'd actually be cool to talk about your business a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Like where you actually make money from. And you don't got to get into too many details, but in, in my in my mind, 
if I were your agent or I was at WME, CAA, one of these big uh, agencies, I would think that you should be getting into movies. Like, you should be acting. I mean, I don't know if that's something that you enjoy doing, but 100 Thieves production is definitely not the level of, like, a blockbuster film. Yeah. But clearly, you got a good head on your shoulders. You're 20 years old with probably no, like, formal background in, you know, uh, not improv, but... Just, get what, we get what you saying. got some acting chops. Yeah. And you got to look for it. Like you would in my head, that would be the next natural progression mm-hmm. if you really want to be larger than life. Like if you're not yeah. gonna go the boxing route, you're not gonna be a musical artist, maybe mm-hmm. that's something you want to do. Is that something you would ever consider? Or like what how do you look at your business and what you want to aspire to be and how you're gonna be a billionaire one day? It definitely actually I have been I you know, I have taken classes before and i've you know i've done a few i did a few like plays and stuff when i was younger and Mm. all that but it's definitely so especially when i got back from europe like me and my my agent were literally talking about it we were like let's get into you know because i had told him a while ago i was like i want to start acting lessons but i don't want to be stupid and i don't want myself to look stupid Mm. so i'm like let me take acting lessons for a while so i can get this shit down before you know, because I've gotten offers to be in like movies or shows that, you know, Pork if up. I were to be thrown in, I have. No, I haven't. <laughs> um, if I were to be thrown into like a movie or a show right away and, you know, like I and I try to learn as I go, yeah. it's I'm going to look stupid. You know, I don't. I Well, maybe I don't. Maybe for some reason I have a God given talent and I'm just able to do that. But I don't know that. But I want to be sure. Your first like, impression is everything. Like you exactly. Go in I, I want to go in, and I if I, if I do go down that route, which I have, you know, been talking about it with my agent for a while. You know, I want to do it right, and I don't yeah. want to half-ass it. So what I want to do is, I just want to, you know, like obviously, like go to castings and stuff like that after I've done like lessons and like practice a bunch. I think that's I think that's a really thoughtful approach, I, and I can't knock it at all. Uh, yeah. But man, there's something there's like beauty in the struggle, and mm-hmm. actually just getting yourself out there, getting your feet wet, giving yeah. it a shot, and you learn from that experience. But I think to your point, a lot of that stuff can be done behind closed doors. So mm-hmm. until you can get to a point where you're really confident in your ability, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but I think, man, there's a lot of things that. There's not a lot of things that you couldn't do, is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, like, you've taken over the internet, you've got all the attention in the world, and now it's like, where do you want to, you know, channel that attention? So... I always wanted to be in Transformers and be, like, Optimus Prime's homie, like, Shia LaBeouf's homie in those. Do you have a dream role? I do. I think it would be really cool to just be some, like, badass dude that just kills people. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Like, imagine right. just going around Let's... and you're, like, just... A hitman, and you're fucking just killing people. So that would be your villain. I want to be cold as hell. So you mm. want to be like, mm. Uh, mm. I don't necessarily you want to be like be Jason Bourne or uh, Ryan Gosling, Gray Man. Like you mm. think you could that'd play that type of role? Yeah. Let's I think that'd be. Yeah. Let's go through an exercise, and Joe, you could drum <laughs> one up too, because this is what we do. Basically, we don't get any work done. We just recast movies with people that we think. Let's pick a movie and mm. cast Vinny into it with just his look. Like, uh, like a great example is like, who would you have? play uh matt damon if you had to recast it for uh, uh goodwill hunting you know mm-hmm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna think for two I'd seconds i recast Vinny as leonardo dicaprio in the departed where you're like on that struggle and having to deal with and you're, you know you're like a little bit in over your head both sides of it no i'm gonna come that. up with some some crazy shit real quick i'd recast you as i want people to be proud of this ryan gosling from la la land I feel like if we covered up the tats a bit, because you mm-hmm. probably would have to do that in some movies. If you oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think you'd crush that role. Patrick Bateman. <laughs> Patrick Bateman? Mm. Mm. I could see mm. that. You know who I... It wouldn't be the... This is the first thing that comes to mind because I've thought this before. Uh, if they ever did, which they'll never do because they should never touch this movie, but Grease, the movie, the musical with Johnny Travolta, is, wait, John Travolta. Johnny. John Travolta. Sorry, <laughs> Johnny Bravo, I, I was thinking Danny Zuko, but his best friend in the movie. You look just like that guy. That's, uh, who, Vega, that's who Vega played in the uh, Grease play. Really? In high school. That's not my best one, but I think that could work. I got to come up with a really good one. Well, like not, imagine being like a Star Wars character, like Anakin or Darth Vader. 
You'd want to be that? You kind of look like oh. the... I could... Anakin. I could... You could be you could, slice ooh. the youth up, bruh. So, so oh, hold on. I, I want to look at what about, what about like a lightsabers. What about like an Avengers type movie? Like a, that would be a superhero dumb. movie. No, 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 no. Yeah, but I, I but I want to like I don't want to be like a hero that's like I'm not gonna kill. I want to kill. I get that. I'm going through my movies right now. I have. I get. A lot of I get. Movies. You're addicted to killing and committing arson. And well, yeah. You know that's my thing. Yeah. Like you that's know that's like why you guys recruited me because well, you yeah. needed to get we some work more, done. Yeah. You know. Yes, people that were. You know what I think could have worked well for you. Uh Instead of that guy Ansel in Baby Driver, I think you could have been. <laughs> you he could have replaced um, Ansel Ansel Elgort in that movie. Ryan, Ryan, Gosling Drive. Ryan Gosling and Drive. That would have been okay. That's a good role because okay, you want to kill. Right, he kills in that movie. <laughs> okay. He's like a protector. Miles Teller and Bleed <laughs> oh, for this. That would be crazy, bro. Yo, we got to re- we should refilm Drive, Recast. and you can kill me in the elevator. Okay. Yeah, just like in that movie. Do do I like? Do it in real life, or is it going to be in the movie that I kill you? Yo, what the fuck? Bro? Can I burn you? <laughs> Hold on, man. There's like one here <clears throat> that I'm thinking it's of. Like, it's like I get to commit arson while you're dying. So I get We're going to gonna talk with HR after this. They're in the building They're right here. <laughs> okay. I think I can report you for something you've said. They're already burning. Yeah, we discussed. Everybody's like, <laughs> burning. <laughs> this is the only room that Vinny, isn't on fire right We got you for this right dream. Now. Your agency could be like, we got you for this dream acting role. But this, on this podcast that you filmed three years ago, <laughs> you said you commit arson and murder and threaten to kill the co-host of the show. We're not sure if you'd be great for Disney on ice anymore. Would you be in Disney? A Disney, like... <laughs> What if you can't kill, but like you can make like fire ass cupcakes like a Disney Channel show? Can I kill the cupcakes? Oh my god! <laughs> you guys me. are making too much of a joke of this. I'm, I'm not making a, a joke of this. I'm, I'm trying I'm my best. I'm having like a really good time trying to think. I'm trying my best here to hey, help. Let me know if you think of anything, because Vinny help Vinny with his. Uh oh, what happened? He started to read something. Did someone burn your car down? No, they'd be dead. Oh. Mm. Got it. Again. again. You can't burn the burner, motherfucker. Okay. I feel like I need one of those cars. Can you help me pick out one of those cars? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Actually? Like, what would it run me? (laughs) If any of that was shown, do not put that in. (laughs) I didn't even get to see what it was. You cannot make this up, bro. The universe, we are in a simulation. A hundred million percent, bro. All right, move on. Move on. I am beside myself right now. Hold on. There's one in here. Look, man. I think I. I just think you got the look How and the personality. Have you I'm sorry, man. I really enjoy we, this. We, like, I think we like picked a few. Good I know. Ones. I. I think he was right, Baby Driver. But I just want people to be impressed with our taste. And I think there's one here that I was thinking of that I can't. What's find. the point of even living anymore? I just. I love this exercise. That's what I've been saying. I think it's really fun. JHB has reacted to nothing on this episode. I said that, and he went. <laughs> <laughs> like JHB right. was like, "That's my whole thing. That's my whole mo." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we can move on. I, I, I just <laughs> think, uh, yeah, I think there's a world where you could, you know, make some noise. Wait. I want you to be like a movie star, man. So I could come. Hey, how come you didn't invite me to your birthday party? I did. You did not. You were. Yeah, I got I invited through Joe, and Joe got invited through your manager. But you never like. I'm not saying from attention. I'm not trying to sound like a martyr, but I'm like, yo. Yeah. I'm. Not, I can't. I, I'm not just gonna show up. He never hit me up. I'm not just gonna show okay. up to this thing. I. With all due respect. And no, 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 no. I understand. I understand. Because I, I've you're not required. Well, I, I definitely heard because I've known you. You're guys not for required a to invite me to things. No, Listen, I. I don't. No, want I you am. To think that's because what I'm I love you guys. Well, not enough to be invited to your birthday. Party. Okay, shut the hell up. Maybe, uh, maybe he well, one. Like a bad look for him. Are we? Are, are we like? That? Are you gonna let me answer the question? Yeah, yeah, no. so just the outsiders. <laughs> Anyways, um, well, that whole week, one, I got. An Airbnb for my buddies that flew out from Seattle, and then when they when they came out, some uh, this I can't really say it. I, I I'll I'll tell you. I'll tell yeah, your whole life is just smoke and mirrors, Vinny. Be real with yourself. Vinny, you're not radiant. You're not apex predator. I don't care what. You're g- never gonna win a land, and you're never gonna. Vinny, I don't care Coming what. I'm on the pro team right now for Valorant, and I swear to God. Yeah! 
Oh, oh. motherfucker, you are Damn. ass. LCQ, brother, I ain't letting you near that stage, my boy. We Man, got put me in a one. random ass tournament for fifty dollars. I will one. I will one you on Haven C Long and put you. I will one v one you and give you a fucking op, and I will have a classic. Oh. That's with just no oh armor. God. That's just oh, and I will ding, just ding, two ding, tap you in the head. We're going. We're going to make. It, we can do this. Yo. You know? Oh, easily. Really quick content video idea. Vinny Hacker uh, uh, dresses JHB team banger video. Why did I get brought into this? Because <laughs> I just thought of it. I was thinking of how funny, how great that content would be. We get you red carpet ready with Vinny. Bang. Easy, easy, easy video. Um, my biggest takeaway is this. Okay. We weren't invited to his birthday party. We weren't invited to his birthday and. I know for a fact we've invited you to two birthdays this weekend. I don't give a damn if the Pope hits you up on that fucking phone. Show us your true colors. We'll see you later. <laughs> Guys, that's going to do it for this episode of the Courage and Eight Shot Show starring Vinny. It was a lot of episode with uh, discussing killing and harming and committing arson and drama and video games. What I need to tell you is this. No one here is wanted by the police or will ever be wanted by the police. And everyone here is uh, uh, a good person. I've, I I've never, pretty, I've never heard uh, Jack struggle like that for like three seconds. That was because <laughs> I was gonna say uh, an innocent. Because person, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say we're all innocent people, but I don't know what you guys do behind closed doors. And after this episode, I'm kind of scared. I told you. I pet my dog and. I told you what I do. Smoke a four to one CBD pen. Hey. And watch TV shows. I know. I don't smoke. I watch I regular show and Rick and Morty. Feel relaxed. Rick and Morty. Uh, thank you so much. And also, we will be crude. If, if you're, you're watching watched, this, we're on the brand new Hundred Thieves Cast ever, channel. Make sure you're subscribed. All the. Do you want to hear my Lieutenant Aldo Rain impression sure. from uh, Inglorious Bastards? Yeah. We will be cruel to the Nazis, and through our cruelty, through the disemboweled, dismembered bodies, it will be thoughts of ours. Do you want to hear my? Apes? Sounds good. One hundred dead Nazis. That's the least weird thing happening. You want to hear my up. Squidward? And I won't eat this scouts. fucking paper. And each and every one, you do you guys want to hear my Squidward Take impression? Take the heads of a hundred dead do you, Nazis. Do, will do die you guys want to hear? Do you want to hear my Squidward Let's impression? Hear. Let's hear it. Homer, are we going to the mall later? Hey, it's me, Squidward from SpongeBob. I fucking hate TikTok kids. Get them out of here. I don't want you to be a TikTok good. kid anymore. Go do a blockbuster film. <laughs> Let me come hang out in the trailer on the set, and bro, I'll get you coffee, whatever you need. Cool. Sounds Do good something to me. with your life, Vinny. Go hit Radiant if you can. All right, All right guys, this thing really right. fell off the wagon. YouTube, we'll see you a bunch later. Goodbye.